Hello everyone, I'm Dion from Dion Video Productions. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to export and transfer your Final Cut Pro project to your iPhone. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is find a project that you'd like to export. Now in this case, in my timeline, I have a fashion film that I shot, which will serve as a great example for this tutorial. Taking a look at the specifications of this project, you'll see that this is a 1080p HD project that's shot in 60 FPS. Also note the aspect ratio, which is 16 by 9, meaning this project is formatted to be displayed on your laptop, desktop, or TV, and we'll be exporting it as such. If, however, you want to learn how to format your project for a smartphone display, making it ideal to upload to social media, such as Instagram or TikTok, I have a separate full-length tutorial on this, which I will leave linked down below. But for now, let's go ahead and export this project. The first thing we're going to do is go to the top right under the share menu and click on master file. From here, a window like this will appear. This will allow us to rename the project, add a description, and also confirm the specifications, as well as get a preview of how large the file will be. Now, both the format and the file size will be dependent on what settings you choose in the next tab. Over in the settings tab, we're going to want to change the video codec. Now, choosing a codec will depend on the purpose of your export. Personally, I like to use the H.264 codec not just when exporting to iPhone, but exporting in general, as this codec provides a great balance between having a relatively small file size while still maintaining much of the original video's quality. If, however, you want a best possible quality codec, you can use the Apple ProRes 422 codec, or even the uncompressed codecs here. But do note that the file size will be much, much larger. As you can see, we went from 300 megabytes to just under 30 gigabytes. This is why, especially when you're exporting to a smartphone, which may not have so much built-in storage, it's great to switch to H.264, as again, this will save you a lot in file size and will retain much of the original quality. This is why I use this codec when exporting to iPhone. Additionally, the .mov file type is one that will be easily read on your iPhone and will allow the video not only to be stored, but also played back straight in the Photos app. Let's go ahead and press next. From here, we choose our destination. Let's say the desktop. Once the project is finished exporting, it will automatically open and we can go ahead and preview this straight on your Mac in QuickTime Player. Now, if you're transferring your file to an Android phone, I highly recommend using services such as Dropbox or WeTransfer to carry the file over. If, however, you're on an iPhone, I highly suggest using AirDrop. AirDrop is great as it will not compress the video, unlike some messaging services, it will actually send a full resolution version of that video and can also be done wirelessly. So to do this, we're just gonna close QuickTime and then we're gonna open a new Finder window. Go under File and click New Finder Window. Then along the menu bar, click on AirDrop. And you're going to want to make sure that your airdrop is discoverable by either your contacts or everyone in order for your phone and your Mac to communicate. Next, you're going to go onto your iPhone, click on settings, scroll to general, click on airdrop. From here, again, you're going to want to select contacts only or everyone. Now, taking a look at our Mac, you'll see the iPhone appear. Then we're going to open up another finder window and then finding our video on our desktop. And we can then simply click and drag this straight from the finder window onto the phone. The transfer should only take a few seconds. Once the transfer is complete, the file will automatically open and play straight in the Photos app. If I go ahead and close the video, you'll see that this is listed alongside the other photos I may have taken or transferred to my iPhone. Playing the video back, you'll see the quality looks great and we can also view this in landscape mode. This is how you export and transfer your Final Cut Pro project straight to your iPhone. Again, if you want to learn how to format your project for the tall, narrow aspect ratio of your iPhone display, allowing it to fill up the full screen while the phone is held in portrait mode, I highly suggest watching my separate Final Cut tutorial, which I will leave in the description. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching.